So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to extrude from these edges to create our sort of handle area. So I'm just going to select the ones on the, well, I guess it would be these ones. I'm going to select the ones on the sides. I'm going to go ahead and hit my extrude tool. Now I'm going to just use the arrow <laughs> and just drag it out. And you'll notice that because it's selected on both sides, just clicking the arrow and dragging it out is taking it out on both sides of the object. All right, now that I have a brand new set, I can go ahead and extrude these as well to create the handle. So I'm going to go ahead and select the three on this side, then I'm going to select the three on this side, and I'm going to hit G on my keyboard because the last tool that I use can be repeated at any time by pressing G. And you'll notice that my last tool that I used was our extrude tool. So if I just hit G on my keyboard, it'll extrude again. That's just kind of a convenient thing. Now I come over here and grab that blue arrow. You got to be real careful when you click on the blue arrow and just drag it out and give our blade a little width. So hmm, kind of looking at this, this guard looks a little, I guess, um, a little tall. So I think what we're going to do is just go ahead and scale this whole, all of them down. Or actually we can just move them all down. So go ahead and right click on the object, select the vertex. And we're going to select all these vertices right here. Make sure you get even the ones on the blade. And we're just going to press W and go ahead and move these down. So I'm just making an adjustment to where this is located. It's a very simple object I just created here. Now we need a tip on our blade. So we're going to want this to come up to a point. So we need to add another edge in here. But I kind of want that edge to be dead center of this blade. So how do I go about doing that? Again, we're going to select the split selected edge. Uh, this is the insert edge loop tool is what it is. We're going to select that and in our tool settings again to get the tool settings up just come over here to the show hide tool settings or you can click the tab for tool settings. And we're going to set this to multiple edge loops and set the number of edge loops to one. Okay and then now when we click in here we're going to come up here and we're going to click like probably right about here. You'll notice if while I'm holding down and trying to click, I cannot move that thing. It is stuck dead center because it's only allowing me to create one edge loop and it's a multiple edge loop. So if, like, if I were to release, hit Control Z, in order to set this to two, it would evenly divide those. See, now it's evenly divided on both sides. That's not really how the blade's gonna look. But you know what, kind of thinking about it, why don't we go ahead and do that? Because that way we can maybe when we create our high poly model, we can maybe put some kind of small design in, inside of it. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's just create two. So hit Control Z, go back, set number of edge loops to two with multiple edge loops selected. Now what we need is for our blade to come to a point on both sides. But before I do that, I want to make this look like it sort of squares off as it's going down, just because that's realistic going into the blade and the handguard. I'm going to take the insert edge loop tool. I'm going to come up here to relative distance from the edge so I can decide where I where I want it to go. And I'm going to select on one of these edges here and pretty close to the edge. I'm just going to go ahead and maybe about right there. Just go ahead and release before I start messing around with the upper. Now one thing I can see here is this is going to be a bit wider than these upper pieces are going to be. So I might want to take these and kind of maybe extrude them inward and that's pretty easy to do. What we can do is right click on the object, select faces, and playing around in here with what we can do with the extrude tool is actually pretty cool. We can actually thin this up and because we have these set, these will all extrude together all the way around the blade. So we're going to go ahead and extrude. Just come up here and with all those faces selected, I right click, select faces, and I just mark it over them to make sure they're selected all the way around. Use the extrude button. You'll notice that now we have the tools up here. So if you were like zoomed in down here and you're like, well, I press the extruder, I don't see it. Just kind of zoom out and then you'll see it again. So now what we want to do is we want to kind of scale this inward. So I'm going to zoom in pretty good. Make sure that I can see that little blue one. I'm just going to click one of them so I can see the middle one. And really, if I do the middle one, it's going to kind of raise it up and I don't want that. So what I'm going to use is instead of the middle one, I just want to show you that you can scale on X, Y, and Z by select that. What we're going to do is we're going to scale it on both the X and the Z, and we're just going to kind of scale it down a bit. And you can see that it's created this little spot here, which isn't exactly what I want. 
All right, what we want to do now is we're going to select the arrow, the red arrow. So make sure when you click it that the arrow is the one that's active. And we're going to kind of move that in a bit. And that's going to notice how it shrank it up. And now we also, maybe we want to move it inward a little bit too. So I'm going to zoom in here, kind of maybe make it a bit thinner than the hilt. So I'm going to go ahead and scale it in a bit. So there we go. So sometimes you got to fool around with the tool, the extrude tool to make it work the way you want to. And again, you didn't have to add this bottom piece. I kind of wanted to add it too. So, so now we want to narrow these this up we don't exactly want to bring it to a point because then that would cause a try to be created and we don't want a try face which is where you have less than four points it's actually three points as a try and that's kind of bad especially if you want to move it over to say a 3d sculpting program in the future so we're not going to do that what we want to do is just we're going to bring these really close together so i'm going to select this one and i'm going to select this one i'm going to Make sure you're on vertex. If you're not, just select this one, select this one, and press R on my keyboard for my scale tool. And you know, when I move these, I want these to be identical to the ones over here, thinking about it now. So I'm also going to go ahead and select those two. So I have those ones selected. If I scale these in, thinking about it, you also want the two on this side to come in as well. But before we do, I just noticed that we have some faces up here that we need to get rid of. So let's go ahead and get rid of those faces first. So right click, select faces, select all the ones on top, then hold down your shift key and select all the ones just below it. And you'll notice that that unselected the ones on the blades. Just go ahead and delete those on top. So now those are gone. All right, now zoom back in, select vertex again. And we're gonna go ahead and select these ones up the base like we did before. And we're just gonna Use our middle mouse button with our alt key to get up to the top. And we're going to select the two on each side at the top. Oops. Make sure I get this one here. So now we have all those selected. And we want to scale these in. So we're going to go ahead and just kind of zoom in here. That's where I'm looking at this edge. And I'm just going to scale this in on the Z. Now you'll see this in a lot of games because they they want to keep their quads. They want to keep the faces of their object to have four different vertex making up the face. So you'll notice that they they don't bring it to a point. They actually just kind of square it off like this. And it, it's yes, it's blunt, but in game you really kind of have to look close to even be able to tell. So I'm just going to scale it in pretty close. And now I have this nice little point. It's not a it's not exactly goes to a point, but in a game engine, scaled down, nobody's going to be able to tell the difference that it's not an actual, coming to an actual point. So it's a dull blade. Every game has dull blades. I don't care. <laughs> All right, so now what we want to do is we're kind of chopped off at the top, so we need to create a little geometry here. So let's just go ahead and use the bridge feature to bridge across. So we'll right click. We're going to select edges. I'm going to select the one in the center first. So I'm going to select this one and I'm going to come over here to this one. I'll press W so it's less confusing. Or you can press Q for the select key to get that widget out of your way. So I'll hold down Shift, select these two at the top, and make sure they're selected. And we're going to come up here and we're going to use the bridged tool, which is this one here. So you can hover over it to see what it is. Bridge tool. You can also go to Edit Mesh, come down to Edge, the Edge section, and you can see that there's also a bridge here. We're just going to click Bridge. So now we bridge those together. We're going to do the same thing with these two edges. We're going to bridge that again. Remember, we can hit G on our keyboard to repeat the last action. And then I'm going to hold down Shift, select those two, and press G again. So now what we're going to do is we want to bring this up to a point. So we're going to actually need this edge here. So we'll probably just right-click, go to Face, and we're going to select these three. And we're going to go ahead and extrude these so we just have some extra stuff to work with. So come up here to Extrude and select your Extrude tool. You get your little widget here and just go ahead and make sure you get right on the blue and drag that up a bit just long enough to where we can create a point we can kind of fake a point here so however long kind of zoom out if you want to judge how sharp it needs to be where this would be like the middle and then we're going to go to vertex and we're just going to move some vertices around to create like a fake point so i'm going to select all four press r on my keyboard to bring up my scale tool just going to scale these in 
and you can also kind of get a little creative with this. It doesn't have to all go up like that. I can just scale them as close as I want, if that's how I want to do it. But you can notice that doing that, I also am going to have to scale it from the side. So just kind of scale that up as tight as I want it. But kind of, I don't want to scale those. So I'm going to hit Control Z, hold down my Shift key, and deselect the ones on the side. That way I'm just scaling these on the edges. And there we go. We have a nice little point to it. We can even maybe press W and move the very tip up just a bit more. And if I right click, select object, kind of zoom out, now we have the makings of a sword. All right, so let's start fixing up some of our sizing issues here. The handle looks like it needs to be, if I were to zoom in here, looks like it's a bit too wide, of course, and I think it needs to be a bit longer than it currently is. So I'll go ahead and select the object, right click, select vertex. And I'll press spacebar, go into four view, and probably come in from the front. So I'll squeeze over the front view. And let's just go ahead and select all these right here in the front. So you can always, if you just want to make sure that you don't actually select vertices that are anywhere else but on the handle, it's good to just, you know, press your spacebar, go into a view that you can easily select them all. You could always, of course, try to level off in here, but it's a safe bet to do it from a perspective camera. So let's go ahead, or rather orthograph, orthographic is what they are. So let's go ahead and right click and we're just going to, well, actually let's uh, hit our scale tool. So press R on your keyboard. And of course we can just scale this on the X and the Z. Kind of bring that down a bit more narrow. So hmm, about right there, but I don't want it to be too narrow. So Maybe I'll just bring that out just a hair more. So kind of maybe like that right there. We need it to be a bit longer. So we'll go ahead and scale. Yeah, I don't want anything else to be longer. I just want this to be longer. So I'm going to scale it on the Y. And then I'm going to hit W and I'm going to move it down because I raised it up. Now naturally we went through the ground here. So we can easily fix that by selecting all of the vertices and move it up by one. And then what we can do is go ahead and just grab these down here and take advantage of this extra space we've now created. So with Snap Grid still turned on, let's go ahead and drag this down and I'll grab all of these vertices. And remember how before we selected the edges to level these off? We also can do that from here. But kind of looking at this object, since I'm not really going to do anything super fancy with the handle, I can take advantage of this and just get rid of these edges. And to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to go to the Edge tool. We're going to double click them, both of them. And we can just get rid of these because we don't need these edges in here. So what you can do is hit Control, hold down Control, and press Delete. And that will delete the edge plus the vertex. You don't ever want to just press Delete because then you would leave the vertex in there and you would just delete the edges. So always use Control and Delete to get rid of an edge. That'll get rid of anything, all the vertices and all of the edges at the same time. So we've just reduced our polygon count by quite, quite a bit by just doing that. We took all of those and made them single polygon faces. So let's uh, let's see here. This is kind of a very plain looking sword, very uh, ordinary. We can maybe do a little bit more ornate to it. We'll just go ahead and click on object mode, select the object. And I was thinking kind of bringing this making it go a little narrow and then maybe like a little ball on the end, a ball shape. And we can do that just by adding some edges to one side. We're only going to do this to one side and then we're going to go ahead and mirror this object over to the other side very easily. So why don't we go ahead and get this set up so we can add a ball on the end by narrowing up some of, we're going to make the handle a little bit more, not the handle, but the handle hand guard a little bit more ornate. We'll go to vertex come over to the side here. I'm just going to go ahead and narrow this up just a bit. So I'm just going to kind of narrow it something like that. And to get kind of a little bit more nice with it, I might take these ones on the sides here. So I'll go ahead and um, use my selection tool. I'll press Q. And I'm just going to select the vertices on the outside on both of them. So that way we maintain uniform. And we're just going to go ahead and not that one on the Z and just, uh, I don't know, that kind of looks cool, don't it? I think, I think I'm going to move them in because that looks cooler than moving them out. I was going to move them out. But all right, so in the next lesson, we're going to go ahead and talk about manual Boolean operations.